Well, good morning. This is Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell, joined by my counterpart today, Mr. Leo Kane. Not only am I a counterpart, I am the 8 o'clock guest. You're the star of the show that in the 8 o'clock show. hour. Actually, this is a the back part. We're going to rearrange the outline a little bit. This is a great place to start going into it. And in the 8 o'clock hour, we're going to chat about common issues found on home inspections. But before we do that, we're going to chat a little bit about the storms and, and that in a moment. And then before we dive into that, you know, this year, Tampa slated to be the home of the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's coming in February. I guess they're selling, I, I learned last night, they're only selling 25% of the tickets they normally sell, and they're selling them at four times the price to make the same amount of money. That is so ridiculous. I wondered how they were figuring all that out. They'll make like, their money. The, the downside there. to that, though, is you're going to have 25% of the people you would normally be in that stadium, so there's actually going to be less overflow into the town i mean people will still flood tampa but there'll be less people flooding tampa than normal it's not going to be what they had anticipated i'm sure when it was planned to come here what eight years ago i think that's how far in advance they plan it so the interesting thing this is actually uh in front of uh i guess who would it be that would actually change it's with the city of tampa they're right now currently alcohol on sundays can't be sold before 11 a.m and so this has interfered of course with a lot of sporting events and that sort of stuff so the new law passed five to one the majority of the city council actually decided that um, they're going to move it forward to the december 3rd meeting to uh move it up to 7 a.m on sunday mornings woot, 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 woot. we are no longer a a backwoods red state, it looks like. Were, were, were you actually allowing our people to drink alcohol when they want to drink alcohol? Backwoods red state. It's so funny. All right. Well, it's so funny. You look, you look at the, the Bible Belt, which is actually a term from like Texas up through Minnesota. And you look at the Bible Belt, and they've got all these weird laws that prevent you from drinking alcohol during certain times of the day. You can't buy it after 10 p.m. You can't buy it before 12 a.m. I mean, at 12 p.m. I mean, it's like and, all these restrictions. Well, some of those counties are completely dry right. counties. You can't even buy alcohol in any of them. I mean, yeah, living in Texas for years, it was funny because you'd go to a restaurant and they would have to check your ID. And if your ID said you lived in certain cities, they could serve you. And if it said you lived in other cities, they couldn't serve you alcohol. I'm like, seriously? Even if you were dumbest? in a different city? Well, you were in a dry, dry county mm -hmm. and you're in a dry county's restaurant. So you have to prove you're not from that county to be able to drink the alcohol. I would think they couldn't serve it at all if it's a drive county. Uh, That's so great. Uh, all it's right. just funny. It's just, it was just funny back then living in Texas, figuring out where and where I can't party uh, as a teenager yeah. to get my alcohol. That's exactly what you wanted to do as a teenager. <laughs> get my alcohol as a teenager. So as a teenager, you're probably not drinking in the restaurants, right? You're drinking with your friends under a bridge somewhere. MD 2020 all the way. You, you know that stuff comes in like 20 to 25 different flavors? <sighs> no, I don't want to know that. <sighs> I think I tried that once and that was the last time ever. <laughs> all right, let's Which talk flavor? about... Let's talk about new home uh, stats for the week of Friday the 13th in November 2020. The number of active listings down yet again at 1,021. Last week, we're 1120. That's normal for this time of the year. We're getting towards Thanksgiving. Less yep. listings are going up. Less job postings are going up. Less people are looking for homes and jobs. Now, this this must have been that little lull that I was talking about probably a month ago. But we had, this week, sold properties only 1127 compared to the prior week of 1654 sold properties. And I blame the election. Yeah, that's I think too. I think it was a little bit of election lull in there. Florida was undecided. Wait, no, Florida was decided. Florida decided within hours. Yeah, I don't think that's even it. Like people just sometimes get weird around the election year and they actually decide to wait until after the election happens. But it doesn't change anything. It's, that's the thing. Like people are still going to buy and sell. You're right. It doesn't change anything. I mean, it doesn't no, make sense. No matter who gets elected, the country is not going to fall apart the next day. Right. Well, right, right, right. But people do. I mean, it's historical. Yeah. You go back and look at the data. If it's an election year, people will tend to wait or put the brakes on to see what happens before they do anything. Which is strange because if you, if you need a place to live, 
you need a place to live. Or you're buying a second home or you're relocating, yeah, I mean, whatever I mean, that is. It, you, you need to pay more attention to what the Fed's doing with interest rates yes. and what your counties and cities are doing with property taxes or impact fees. You're that, right. That, that actually more makes more sense than who's getting elected for the president. Right. And pending properties, these are up a little bit again, 1506 compared to 1499 last week. So I, that's, you know, this number is still higher than our sold. Yeah, it's still higher than sold. So it uh, points the direction we're moving. And still higher than active. It is. So, yep. Yeah, so higher than sold, higher than active. What about what about our neighboring markets? Is Orlando making a rebound? Uh, we didn't pull Orlando. We will just for you when you're ready, but we did not pull it. We'll have to do it like monthly or something. Yeah. Where's Mimu? We'll, we'll get them uh, M- Mimu, getting it ready. Mimu needs to pull our monthly. Uh, so let's chat Orlando. about this. This is like your favorite time of year, right? Like tis the season for hurricanes. Better season. than my favorite time of the year. This is my favorite year in the past 170 favorite times of years. Actually, no, this this actually makes me sad. It's a record breaking year. This makes me sad. This 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 theta forming as the 29th name storm and iota forming today yeah. as the 30th name storm actually makes me sad because all of the talk about 350 parts per million carbon in the air moves us towards a mass extinction event. This hurricane season is proof that we're moving in that direction. Okay, and that's so scary. That makes me sad that we've had more names. To, but 2005, we had an ADA. So we had all the way up through ADA, which was a bad year for hurricanes. 2004 was a catastrophic year for hurricanes. That was Hurricane Charlie. But this year, in light of all of the, the stuff coming out on how the Earth's temperature is warming, um, how we've got less biodiversity, how our rainforests are turning into deserts. This storm season is proving that, and it actually makes me sad. Usually I'm really happy when we have our usual 15 to 20 named storms. But yeah, the, the season, we're just talking Adam, uh, who's just joining so, us now. So on if, how it's, if, it's, yeah. if it's getting warmer, this would mean that it's going to continue. Yeah, right? if it's getting like warmer, this, this hurricane season is going to be, and we're not through the season yet. I mean, in the past 10 years, we've had storms forming in December. I, I think it was the year that we had Irma, we actually had storms forming in January as part of that hurricane season. Yeah, so that was a long that one. Was three years ago. That was a long season. I'm not seeing this lighten up. And if you look at Iota, who's forming, they'll name it today, it's forming in the Gulf. It is following Ada's footsteps. Now, is it going to do the complete little loop-de-loop that Ada did? Is it going to go up towards New Orleans? Still too early to tell because it's that disorganized, but the stronger the storm gets, and that's why Adam and I last week were talking about Ada as an impact to Tampa, Yeah. while everyone else was saying, no, it's going to New Orleans. No, the stronger the storm gets, the more likely it is going to hit Florida in this time of the year. So the same thing with Iota. Watch its strength. If it, they're saying it's going to be a hurricane, it's coming towards Florida. If they're saying it's going to stay tropical depression, tropical storm, it's heading towards Texas. And that's what you just have to watch with the storm. So, yeah, normally I'd be super excited about hurricanes, but Ada did cause, I mean, there were 40, 50 mile an hour sustained winds. I've got a picture of a stops of a street sign on my street. This is on my intersection street corner. Completely leaning. Got, that Ooh. got. Looks like a car hit it. No, that was <laughs> storm damage. <laughs> It's, it's, well, no, well, it's flat. If you call Leo, it's storm damage. If you call me, it's, uh, you know, it, that, that, it's, it, it, it already it. happened, right? You know? Yeah. So it's I existing. Mean, da- it's wear and tear. If you call me, it's uh, storm so damage. That is not Leo. wear and tear. Yeah, that's wind damage. <laughs> that sign is, is like, <laughs> it's horizontal to the sidewalk. That oh. was like- yeah, that's from the gust of winds. So we had 40, 50 mile an hour <laughs> winds. I'm hearing about the horticulture damage out in St. Pete. I'm hearing about one of my inspectors. We lost, He lost power. He lost part of his roof. I mean, this was a storm to be reckoned yeah. with. I had a little bit of issues with my roof, too. And you had issues with your roof. Yeah, my roof's not that old I at all. I don't ensure that, that roof. Yeah, you don't. You're right. So you call Leo, that. you know, call Aaron, make sure you get that handled. He's like, call the right person. Yeah. It's not me. <laughs> so so basically, back to this 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 hurricane season. We have broken rag. We've broken a 170-year record, which I don't know if we broke a 170-year record if we broke a record from 2005, but it depends how you want to skew your statistics. Well, it says it's the 29th named storm breaking a record. Well, it, it, they, they say this is the worst hurricane season on record, which is 170 years of tracking. In terms things. of name storms. In terms of name storms. And, and it's pretty much the worst if you live in New Orleans. Or, yeah. You, you know, yeah, New Orleans. Got, well, I don't know. Katrina made a little impact. Yeah, there. Katrina. <laughs> yeah, they've got hit every. They got 
so many storms. Yeah, you they gotta did. think you had Katrina, then you had Gustav. I mean, you've had some pretty bad storms in New Orleans. So we've had a lot of storms, but we haven't had a lot of strong storms. And right. I think that's why we've had a lot of storms. Because when you have a really strong storm, it cools down everything. But when you have a don't really have a huge storm cooling everything, you need more little storms. Do you mean huge as in surface area or huge as in strength? Yes. <laughs> yes, what? That was so weird. Okay. Listen, if you had some damage or you had some storm talk, we want to hear from you. 888-404-1010. Give us a ring. Let us know if you saw anything from Ada. 888-404-1010. That is our on-air number. And Pat George will grab you and bring you on the air when we come back right after the break. Stick around. we got some great stuff coming up. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is uh, this is the Leo hour. This is the hurricane hour. Tam- Tampa home. No, no, no. This is the Leo hour where Leo gets to talk about home inspections. And, yes. Oh, actually, I have a question for you, Adam. Okay. Fire away. So typically, when a name storm hits a geographic area, mm-hmm. if you're in the process of having a four, if you're in process of getting insurance written, right, they want you to do roof certifications to make sure the roof is still there. Are they enacting that for this storm? I am still waiting to get uh, binding restrictions lifted. So when they get lifted, like, then know. we'll then Storm's we'll fast, know, man. Right. It's time um, to get with the program. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, they, they're bit, they've been slow on this one for some reason. <laughs> Maybe uh, because they, it is gone. It is on. here. It yeah, is gone. Yeah. So I mean, I haven't been able to write anything all week. I mean, I've been like even for your daughter's policy. I took all the information. We've answered all the questions. I just can't press the bind button. We got a month, so I think you're okay. I know. So we I don't. Know. We don't know actually that if you're gonna if the insurance companies are gonna make us redo the four points. Though. It's 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 gonna be specific to the insurance company. Okay. Um, citizens probably, yeah, because that's just how citizens be. But <laughs> is anybody even writing? For uh, probably a lot of no loss statements. You know, if you're already insured or something like that, or you're one, trying to get reinstated. But it is what it is. We'll we'll take it one day at a time. That's all we can do at this point. Um, I've been very frustrated this week, so hands are tied. Can't do anything. You should be like taking a vacation if you can't buy anything. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I still got should, still should got a lot of questions. Go still got a lot of questions to answer. So. Yeah, no. yeah, this has been a good week for Leo. Between Ada and between this. Oh, Ooh, you got a PlayStation. PS5. I got a PS5. Wow. It came in the mail yesterday. Proud of you. In yeah. the mail? Like her at Amazon? <laughs> no, no, no. It came in. It came in it, I didn't get mine through Amazon. I got oh. mine through Walmart. Oh, okay. So, yeah, my PS5 came. Uh, as everyone on this show knows who's been following Leo for years, that I'm an avid gamer. Mm-hmm. Um, yesterday was a bit of a holiday. Are you now, are you a first, are you a first player, role player type game? Or what do you, uh, you don't strike me as the Madden type guy. No, I'm more of a third person action game. He, yeah, he doesn't even own Madden, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I'm a third person action. There you go. And speaking of Madden. So, what is third person action for the first level? It's like Hello Kitty and uh, yeah. that type of stuff. <laughs> I'm okay, so so first person is first person is how we see the world. First person is I'm looking straight ahead. I can only see what's straight ahead. Got it. I'm not a prey animal, so I can't see you in all all different right. directions. Third person, the camera is behind you, floating behind your character. Got it. So your character, so you can see your character and still play and, and see, see the surrounding you. environments. You can hide behind a chest high wall, and you can see what's going on around. It, it's a more it's not as immersive as first person, but. It makes for a cleaner gaming experience because you there can you see go. what's going on. There's a whole thing in this world. There's like people that get paid money to professionally game. Yeah, yeah I do. I, I've watched those tournaments before. You and would. I, <laughs> you totally would. That's why would. they get paid is because Leo watches yeah. them. Yeah. Well, I remember I was sitting here where like COVID restrictions have just got lifted. Breweries mm. are open. Mm. I'm at a brewery called uh, Berry House, which is in Ebor, and okay. we're watching the Tetris World Championship. Tetris Ooh, World Championship. Nah, I can I could mess up some some Tetris. I tell you what, I don't think they have it anymore. Maybe they do. You would know. But before we had kids, my husband and I would play Tetris, and they had this one where it burst each other. So mm-hmm. like, if mm-hmm. you removed mm-hmm. say one or two yeah, or four, Tetris and it slides over to the other person. Yeah, yeah, we would do that all the time. Like Super that. competitive. If like, they had a N sixty four Mario Kart professional league, <laughs> I could probably I could probably mess with that too. Yeah, well they they. I, they, they're the most recent Mario Kart kind of was sad to me and because they took all those old tracks mm. and they put them in the new graphics and the tracks were super huge and it took away from that fast-paced gaming experience. Yeah. And then yeah. when the tracks were so huge, you could just dodge everything pretty easily. Yeah. 
Hmm. Never saw the game, so I can't comment so on I, that. So I let's let's. I, I know I could talk video games for hours. And I know. We could talk hurricanes for segments, but. You want to talk home inspections. Yeah, we want to talk about some of the common issues found on home inspections because we get <laughs> I can this. I tell you what I find. <laughs> yeah, we get this a lot. And so let's talk about this. This will be fun. We've got a list of, you know, well, I mean, you, we could spew this probably all three of us right off the top of our head. But, you know, and it's it's interesting and you've changed your reports. That would be an interesting thing to talk about, too, because you guys used to highlight stuff in red and now not so much. Because experience shows that kind of freaks out the buyer, even if it's a twenty cent part and it's a really simple fix. Yeah, I mean, it freaks the buyer. Well, are we talking four points? Or are we talking full home inspection? Full home inspection. Well, there's, yeah. there's an art to the home inspection because we're we're going into people's homes to point out everything wrong with it. That's we call material, something that's going to cost two hundred and fifty dollars or more to replace, and sometimes we point out stuff that costs two hundred and fifty dollars or more to replace, but it's a twenty cent it's a twenty cent part. That you could do yourself. So there's maintenance items. And, mm-hmm. and most home inspection reports are filled with maintenance items. They're not filled with yeah. your house is going to fall down. You're going to die of mold inhalation. The speaking, termites speaking, are speaking, speaking the, of the maintenance. The deferred maintenance ones are the ones that are huge. I mean, there's yeah. like a lot. I, uh, but I did look at an inspection like literally a couple days ago, and I think it had three different kinds of termites on do you it. Want my, do you want my insurance tip of the week right here while we're talking about the maintenance and stuff? If it's yeah, timely. Sure. Don't send your insurance insurance agent the full home oh don't no, no never do that oh yeah don't or your yeah. insurance is more specifically your insurance carrier but yeah, if you're if your insurance agent you know is like me once i see it i can't unsee it so i have or to you can't write it or your lender for that matter so yeah. this is where we as agents protect you guys as buyers because you have to think this home inspection is for you this is your due diligence it is your buyer beware it is your insurance policy to make sure you're getting a good home or have the opportunity to walk away way that's the purpose of that it is not for your lender it is not for your insurance agent yeah, we only and they don't need the to four, see it we only yeah, want to yeah. see the four point your insurance com- your insurance company not the agent not your the insurance agent, company is, is trying to look for an excuse not to write you a policy that's a hundred percent the lender is looking for true. an excuse not to lend you money if they could end up with the property back so that's don't why they that's give why them a home inspection <laughs> yeah. report yep don't scare them don't say well on top of the person not being able to pay the mortgage this home is going to fall apart. You're right. So I would let's talk about like what are the top five things that you see on almost every single home inspection report? Major or minor? Let's just go with the top five things. We'll okay. get into major okay. in a minute. My, my, my low hanging fruit that I love to find on every home is if you have a like if you have a garage and you've got that side door, that side walk in and out door. There's always wood rot on that door. On the bottom, yep. On the bottom. That That's the number one defect we find. I would say nine out of ten homes have that. Of course. How much are doors to replace? Well, you don't have to usually replace the whole door. That the could handyman, be like $750 to $1,000 yeah. to replace that door. But the handyman usually, depending on the extent of the wood rot, yeah, doors are can, expensive. Well, they can go in in the bottom and cut that wood part yeah. and then you know reshem a new piece sand it, paint it, and it looks like new. If you let it go too far, then you got to replace the whole door. But if it's minor wood rot at the bottom, you can do that. And the challenge for that is if you're getting a government loan, it's actually a type of termite. It's it's a wood decay it's a, fungi. It, it's a fungi, not a termite. Mm-hmm. Termites well, they, are bugs. Fungi they, are just fun guys. They, <laughs> no, no, no. They flag that as a, as a termite issue. Yeah, yeah. WDO. Yep. So essentially, that's a big one that if you're getting a government loan, will always trip you up. So the reason why I mention this, because if you're a seller, Thank you, Adam. these things are really important, I, right? I agree. We, yeah. we encourage our sellers all the time to get pre-listing home inspections so that the buyer doesn't dig these things up. I always love the pre-listing home inspection, especially in a, in, when, you, when the market shifts. I mean, right now you have... An you, abundance you of buyers. You have your pick of the litter when it comes to uh, Cruella Deville's pick of the litter when it comes to <laughs> to the Dalmatian that is your home. She wanted yes. the whole litter though. So yeah. Uh, so basically, you have your pick of the litter right now of the seller. But as that shifts, the pre-listing home inspection becomes how you defend your last price because we've done this before. You do a pre-purchase home inspection. You say you're asking two seventy-five for the home. The buyer comes back and says, "Well, we found this, 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 and this in the home inspection report. Now we're going to say two fifty. Now you have to weigh, do I take this 250 or do I go back out to market 
and see what else I can get. If you have your pre-listing home inspection report, you can slam it back in their face saying, no, bad doggy. I already knew about this when I said 275. We've, we've used that as a, as a negotiation tactic. If they've had a pre-listing home inspection, the seller can go back and mark up anything they've done and anything they're not going to do. If it's given to the buyer and they've seen that before they've done the inspection and they try to at reinsert those on their inspection. We're like, no, no, bad it was doggy. In there. Roll up the report, hit them on the nose, yep. rub their face in it. Man, bad you're doggy. hitting all the hits today. I love it. Yeah, you bad, already bad knew doggy. this before you made the offer. So yeah, so that so the, that door, the door rots. Number one. Number two would probably be if your paint's more than five years old. We're gonna find these micro cracks coming off the windows mm. um, on the exterior. They're gonna be not true diagonals. They're gonna be kind of like a wavy diagonal down. Probably if your home's more than five years old, I'm sure you find a lot of, speaking of cracks, probably a lot of cracks in tile and that kind of stuff. Yeah, we find the nominal, like, building shrink, nominal settlement, the building shrinkage, we find those. That's another very popular low-hanging fruit we find. Um, with that one, you, it just needs to be recoded. It's, not, it's a really simple fix. Yeah, and they're not huge things. These are pretty simple, easy things to fix, but they get flagged on probably 9 out of 10 yeah. inspection reports. So, All right. What would you say number three is? Uh, for the most common. I'm going to say, and if you have a home that's older than 15 years and they've done any sort of upgrades to the home, we're going to probably find an electrical outlet that has some cross polarity. Yep. Mm. Basically, that's where, that's where I was going to get. Yeah. Wires are flipped, right? Yeah. Wires are flipped. Uh, maybe a breaker is double tapped because uh, <sighs> they ran out of love, space. Love them double tapped. Love them double tapped. So, wow, this hour is just flying by. I know. I know. Um, but yeah, that those are the top three I think we're going to find. Um, so you want to talk about four and five when we come back or we're going to get into some of the major stuff? You want to talk about the major stuff because right. once you pass those three, the minor stuff is, yeah, light bulbs are out. Yeah. Like the most common. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if you like what you hear and you need a home inspection or you need a storm post storm inspection, text, Call or text. 813-377-2775. What are we texting? Inspection? inspection? Inspect inspect this. Inspect this. To 813-377-2775. We'll be right we'll back. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. No, I cannot talk that fast, Katrina, as the <laughs> as the guy giving you all the legal legal at the I end think, of that commercial. Well, Pat, don't they actually speed it up? They record it in regular voice and then speed it up, right, to fit in the time. I think that's how it works. That's our little secret. Yeah. Unless you're the works. micro machines guy from the '80s, he actually talked at that speed. He did. He did. He was really famous for that. Too. Yeah, he was really famous. No, we for have fast hired speed. Alvin for that. Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks. Right. All right, so major <laughs> issues in a home inspection before it gets signed. Okay, on. so major so, issues. Yeah, what are, are major stuff? Major stuff is we're going to see damage to your roof coupled with staining in the attic. Kind of like the photos that Katrina showed me of yeah. her own home Thank after you for that. Ada. At your her own home after Ada. That that that's that would have considered a major issue because now you're talking about major issues or systems that need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's my roof is not even that old. And I have moisture barrier underlay on the whole Listen, roof. Listen, that is you're, why you're you, need, you, you have wind damage. That's easier to prove wind damage when your roof is not that old and you've got the extra level. Your layers roof could still be sitting at Home Depot and the insurance carrier is going to think it's too old. So don't, you know. <laughs> your, your, well, roof, we your roof, roof could still be pocket, the shingles you know? in the packet. Say those were installed wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. Now, question for you before we get too far off of the roof topic. And we're talking about hurricanes and things that just happened. So... Let's say I got a roof, it's three years old, but let's say one shingle came off. Architectural though, so it's all layered. What do you what would you do for your house if it, you're it's just one shingle? One shingle. Now what you're talking one whole shingle or just one of those tabs? One of the tabs. I probably wouldn't do anything. Okay. I probably would not if it's architectural, so the, there's two different types of shingles. One looks like barbecue bricks that are next to each other. And that's called three tabs. And there mm -hmm. are three of those barbecue bricks per tab. And the other one's called the architectural or dimensional shingle, and that's got a whole bunch of, I call them flappies. I say it's textured, but yeah. The flappies. <laughs> the flappies. The flappies. They're, they're called tabs, but they're flappies. So you have little a bunch flappy of doodles. Little, little bunch of little flappies all over each other. If you've got a good shingle, like you didn't go for the Tamco low-end 
basically the Tamco low end shingle has the flappies, but they're so big they might as well just be three tap. Mm -hmm. If you've got true Tamco or Owens Corning or Atlas or GAF shingles, and you've got a bunch of flaps, and a flap blows off, who cares? You've still got more flaps in that area. That's the whole purpose of the flaps or the or the, the, the flappies. And the, it's <laughs> just so you have extra layers of protection. Now, if you lost a whole shingle and your roof's only three years old, you can put a new shingle in its place. Okay. So what about, I mean, I, and I'm getting questions from folks watching on, on Facebook. And yes, I did have some damage in the front. I've got what they call dead valley in the front of my house where the foyer entry is taller than the rest of yeah, the ceiling. Very common. And uh, that one spot, like even after my roof was put on, I had it repaired and I'm still getting a spot. So with, with Ada, you have to think that in addition to areas that had strong wind, we had a lot of rain. So when you have these dead valleys and that's that's where your architect says, oh, this looks great. And your engineer cringes because they know that's where water's going to sit. Yeah. So how do you fix that? Like we can't redesign the house now. Uh, yeah. You can't redesign the house now, but what you can do is you can use a better underlayment. Mm. You can use a thicker... Get that SWR. Yeah. Yeah. Use, use a better underlayment. Use a thicker... Um, use a thicker top sheet, a thicker modified minimum. Just make it, make, it, make it better. So what ends up happening with Ada, we had so much rain, your dead valley filled with water and your roof might not have actually leaked. It might have gone above your flashing at the sidewall and the water got in there and once the water gets in there it goes underneath the roof system mm -hmm. and it's like a roof leak at that point point. and that's what happens in a lot of the dead valleys in these storm events because you, it's not only the wind it's the amount of rain and the time the rain happened we had close to 24 hours of straight rain we had six it's inches heavy too real heavy six inches yeah it's uh, i don't know we'll have to have you look at it leo to see what I'd, you fi think? I'd file a claim Really? <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm not your Adam's, Adams, If Adam says, uh, you've come a long way, So Adam. if it was your you've home. You've come a long way. If you were me and it was your home, you would file a claim. I would see how much it costs first. But there's That's no, what I was but there's no, here's the, here's the deal. When it comes to cat claims, and this is, this would be a, a catastrophic event. They don't hold those against you, right? So you're not, you're, you're not. Gonna I, have, you're not going to run into an issue later on where you can't, you're, where you're uninsurable because they look at yeah, it as my an roof act of is God. not that old, and I wrote a check for my roof. I didn't get a claim. I mean, I paid for it. I no, I know, it. but I would. I, but what you also need to double check is what your um, hurricane deductible is. Yes. Right? your hurricane deductible percent. might be like might be like six thousand oh, dollars. But here's where Ada is great. Ada was a tropical storm. Some carriers, it's not hurricane. So not are you hurricane, telling me I have to read the fine print? Yes. Some carriers, it's not hurricane, it's name storm. Yeah, but most of them are hurricane. So that, that, that difference between it being a hurricane. This is where Aaron would be perfect. Yeah, this is where right. Aaron Dunham yeah. But, back to the show. but what, it was a cat one when it, it, it you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's, you, you fight them. You they're know gonna, how it's going to go. They're going to spin it to their advantage as much as they can. And the other side of the table is going to spin it against them. And the engineer is going to be in the middle just forensically saying, this is Give what happened. Give them a new roof. <laughs> Give them a new roof. I don't care. I, they need a new roof. The lawyers figure out if it's name storm, if the law and ordinance coverage and all this other other yeah. stuff. We just say, hey, this house needs a new roof. The only thing that we've got, like the claims that I've, or the people that have called in yet called in yesterday, it was a lot of flooding. Yeah. A lot of flooding in, in uh, Pinellas County. So we yeah. had... Somebody that was on the beach, they they got some they got some damage. You got another person that's in South St. Pete. They had a lot of damage. And that's and a different policy. You need a flood uh, policy. You do, and try dealing with FEMA. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, major defects. What else? Roof. The second one would be structure. We have a lot of sinkholes in this area. Mm. We have a lot of beautiful large laurel oaks that die, and then the, that organic matter decays. So you end up with voids underneath your house. So structure becomes Cross spaces another... you can't get to with wavy floors. That's a big deal. Yeah, we had, we, we had one inspection that we were supposed to do on Wednesday because the crawl space already had two feet of standing water in it. Mm. <laughs> now now we need a boat good. to get in there. Oh. Um, so, so, yeah. So structures. So structure could be the most expensive thing. Um, if you need underpinning, if you need grout injection, um, yeah, if you got an, huge. If that's you got an old home and you need to have the, the crawl space piers replaced, the beams replaced. That can be really expensive. Roof expensive. The next thing we're going to talk about is AC. Also expensive. Also expensive. And major defects are things that are majorly expensive to fix. <laughs> so let's say you had a roof leak and it wasn't treated. And now you've got mold. 
that is growing inside, some, some with its mycotoxins coming into your house, um, and that gets into the duct system, you have to replace your entire AC system. So, and that's, that's like, yeah, including the ducts, that's like seven or eight grand right there. Yeah, I mean, and that's what, as a home inspector, that's what you guys are looking for. Yeah, right? we're looking Those for big these ticket major items, safety tickets. defects. So, in addition to these safety defects, these minor maintenance items, we're also looking for these major defects. Um, other major defects would be your electrical panel needs to be replaced because it's a certain brand that you can't get insurance on or it's dangerously wired. Yeah, why don't we chat about those? And that way, for the person listening, if you've got an older home, Go outside, check your doesn't panel box. Doesn't even have to be that old. Doesn't I've have seen, to be that old. Yeah. In the '80s, right? No, I mean I've seen, I've seen some that Newer? are two thousands yeah. where really they. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, which brands are we seeing built in two thousand? Challenger, Challenger. Okay. Yeah. So basically, or you'll or you get Pex plumbing. That's probably yeah. like twelve years old, but they're not going to take it because it's Pex. You know. No, stuff Pex like is that. still acceptable. If it's after like two thousand eleven or something uh, like sure. that. Sure. Yeah, because I think you're talking polybutylene at that point. Uh, they'll, they'll say if it's so i have certain carriers if it's pex they won't take it unless it's newer than a certain yeah, year so this okay brings up an interesting point that i think we Nobody should likes discuss either. Yeah. there are things that are still allowed today in the florida building code but if they're done and they're in a four-point report the insurance company won't write the policy mm -hmm. right not getting insurance okay, so these are these are tricky things like you've replaced your kitchen sink or bathroom sink. Mm -hmm. yep. And you've gone from a pedestal to a vanity. Love it. So now the piping is not going to line up correctly. So you use something called the flex drain. Flex drains are allowed by Florida building code. But insurance company sees one oh, in a four point like, um, and they will not write the policy. Mm -hmm. the, so, uh, wh wh that's a big disconnect. You and I were having, yeah, having that a is big a huge debate about that. That is a huge disconnect from the home inspectors to the insurance companies in that. Code allows it. Standard operating procedures of home inspector allows it. Insurance companies, and not even all the insurance companies, some of the insurance companies don't allow it. So why, why don't they some, like yeah, it? Like, some. what's the deal with it? Well, it's not a rigid connection. It flexes. It's 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 a basically. You, you, they, what they want is one solid pipe. Solid C, PVC. But here you've got a piece in the middle that is mm -hmm. added to make the other two pieces join together. So it's more prone to fail earlier. So you've got that one. You've got the other thing like um, you go to your – I get this a lot on beach side. On beach side, you open the electrical panel cover and you look at your breaker box and it looks like a Christmas tree in there. That is probably a Zinsco panel. Yep. And uh, we have to tell you that that panel needs to be replaced because it's a risk for your house burning down according to the insurance companies. And every I've been into properties that actually did have it and it was like a shell and I looked at the panel and I go, well, that's why it's in that condition. But the, the sad part about that is you tell that to these people and they're like, I've owned this condo for 40 yeah, years and it of. hasn't burned down. Sorry, your insurance company won't write insurance. Yeah. <laughs> it's a ticking time bomb. Yeah, <laughs> I think people don't understand that, that you can have insurance and they renew. How they don't check it after time, I don't know, or require a new four point because they would see it. Well, so, you know, the insurance carrier, if you've been with the same carrier forever, you know, they're not, they're not going to spend the money to come out. They can. It's in the contract. They Every carrier reserves the right to come inspect your property at any time. And now more of them are doing that. And now more of them are doing it. And mo I, I have carriers where, you know, they'll, we could, they don't, they're going to do their own because they don't, no offense to you, they don't trust the, the inspector, right? None taken. Or where we get a wind mitigation and I'm putting in all the information on the wind mitigation into the quote. If there's not the photographic evidence of what's there, they're taking off the credits. So question State Farm for you. is the worst on that because I have gotten State into Farm's not even really insuring fights. anything. Yeah, I've gotten into fights with their underwriters. i they're like, Well, I can't tell from the photo. And I'll take the photo and I'll blow it up. And they're like, mm -hmm. I still can't tell from the photo. And I'll throw a huge circle around it. And then I'll finally call them out. I mean, have you ever crawled through a hundred and fifty degree attic to get to the smallest piece of the roof system nope. to get you a photo that a blind man can see because I've blown it up? 7,000% for you to see the clip and you still say you can't see it. But we pay our claims. Yeah. 
Uh, they are. The State Farm is the worst when it comes <laughs> to getting a policy written, and I and I know they don't even really insure anything here in Florida. I mean, we don't I because mean, they can't get that through the underwriters. Well, we I no, they're just not insuring it. I, there's not. And Adam, and I Adam's have laughing because he knows I've gone through this. I have it's to true. take photos I'm, out of our windmill report. I have everything with State Farm. I have to house. blow it up seven thousand percent and draw a circle around it and send it back to them. Yeah, they, I mean, they're not ones we would refer to. Those big companies, we just don't. There's a, many, many reasons we could tell you why. But if you want to get a real insurance uh, quote from many different carriers that will equally pay a claim if you have an issue, mm-hmm. call or text 813-377-2775. Adam will give you an estimate and hook you up. 813-377. Text insure this. <laughs> insure this instead yeah. of inspect this. 813-377-2775. Leo, when we come back. Let's name off those panels that are faulty, shall we? And Challenger, then... Zinsco, Federal Pacific, Sylvania. Thank you. I guess that wasn't there. <laughs> and, we're done. and we're done. That's it. All right. More when we come back. Stick around. <laughs> Well, good morning. Welcome back. I did one of those drop the microphone and leave things during the break when we just named panels. Yeah, you did. Well, we spent a lot of time. Got it. Boom. We had spent a lot of time on panels, and I know we got more questions. How much is a panel to replace, typically? 1,800. (sighs) Yeah. It's better than a roof. Yeah, roofs are like anywhere between 7,500 and 10 grand. Or a Big ticket items. (laughs) Big ticket items. (laughs) Which we're going to talk about next, all about Uh, roofing. Another big ticket item is let's say you have an older home. We have copper plumbing. Or galvanized plumbing. Um, the copper plumbing starts to fail around 40 years. Copper stopped being used primarily around 40 years ago. So copper plumbing is becoming the next insurance hotbed item on things they don't like to see. Because uh, when you have to replace yep. your copper plumbing, which is in the slab, you've now got to run new plumbing through the attic. So you have to reconfigure your plumbing. And that's about six to eight grand. I was like, that's not cheap. At least. Yeah, at that's least. That's not cheap. Yeah. No, yeah and then in Heaven Bridge, you have... Galvanized. Now, now, now I'm going to tell you something that's scary. Yeah. Insurance companies don't like galvanized plumbing because it means it's about 50, 60 years old. Leo doesn't like galvanized plumbing because basically it's lead pipes with a galvanized coating. So when your galvanized plumbing starts to get old and that galvanized coating starts to leave, you are drinking lead. Mm. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's some trivia for you. So if you have an older home, we I strongly urge you to remove your galvanized plumbing, not because the insurance company is trying to prevent a leak. I'm trying to prevent you from getting dementia. There you go. Yeah, don't drink the lead. Don't drink lead. Not good for you. <laughs> All right, so what else? Like, what else? What do you think the most common thing is that surprises people in a home inspection? But it's very common for you, or you see it regularly, or it's not that big of a deal. Um. Uh, I would say in the kitchens and bathrooms, you're supposed to have an outlet called a GFCI outlet. And it's one where if you drop the dr- drop the potato masher into the pot of boiling water or you drop your hair dryer into the sink, the outlet's supposed to trip off. Um, now, Yep, some lovely engineer created those after, the, what, the 80s when yeah. that was like the big thing. They were People showing toasters going themselves. into the water. Yeah, yeah. toasters into the, in the bathtub, the picture of yeah. the toast. Yeah. So I heard actually. Don't, you don't need toast in the bathtub, by the way. <laughs> the, only toast, the only toast you need in the bathtub is with a wine glass. <laughs> um, so I heard from Pat during the break that actually a death during Hurricane Ada was caused because one of those outlets didn't function properly and someone's garage flooded. And there was a power tool on the ground, and the outlet didn't trip, so that person got electrocuted. So what about – you know? can those be daisy-chained? Because we've seen that before, oh, too, yeah, on definitely. inspections. And it's – in so – What's ha- a daisy chain? Yeah, so talk about that because so, sometimes people think every single outlet in the kitchen needs to have it. But well, every single kitchen in the outlet has it because... Every kitchen in the outlet? Yeah, every, that. Every <laughs> single outlet in the kitchen has it because if, you, if they're all in one circuit and that circuit trips, it shuts the whole circuit off, everything downstream. So what ends up happening is in the kitchen, you might only have one with the little reset button, but you put your outlet tester in the one next to it, you hit the, re- the test button, which simulates the, the fault... It's going to pop the breaker. Where it gets annoying to an inspector is when the bathrooms are like that. So you have two bathrooms, one on the first floor, one on the second. I put the outlet tester in. I hit the button. I hear the pop, and I gotta find the I gotta find the thing to reset. So I waste I used to waste a lot of time hunting for the the, the daisy chained 
GFCI so I could reset it and test more outlets. And so that's really one of those things that's not super expensive to repair. Or I mean, replace it's really me. simple. I mean, if you want to upgrade your outlet from from a normal to a GFCI, the outlet materials is about twelve dollars. Um, you can do it yourself. It's fairly easy to do. I always recommend you hire an electrician. Right. Anything electrical plumbing. But I mean, you can get them done for like fifty dollars a pop from an electrician if you have a bunch of them. Yeah, it's really inexpensive, yeah. but it's a big deal. Like it that, can save your life. I mean, with that story Pat George told us, that's likely what happened, wouldn't yeah. you say? Now, would you have? Would you typically have a GFCI in the garage? Yeah, you're supposed to. It's a wet area. So, show. from 1994 to 2004, the Electrical Building Code upgraded itself on where these outlets were required. Mm -hmm. It started with just having them on the outside, so uh, garage would have been the first, the first level. Gotcha. It ended with them in the kitchen, so. That, that So you basically, between 94 and 2004, you needed them on exterior, you needed them in the laundry room, you needed them in the bathrooms, then you needed them in the kitchen. So, yeah. And garage, a lot of building code stuff happened between then, too, because that's when they did all the, that's when all the roofs started getting changed. Well, that was Andrew, which is 92. Mm -hmm. um, that really changed the building code as far as how roofs, and now we're going through a major change in the 2020 building code when it comes to roofing. What What's are they happening doing now? with that? They are changing how you can, how and what type of underlayment you put on. It is a major code change. It is probably like what? The, um, so. Like what we were, are they moving from and to? So basically, it used to be you can put felt down or you can put a synthetic layer down, which is basically... Is that the peel and stick? Well, no. The, the peel and stick is a, is, is, is a synthetic peel and stick. It's something that sticks to the roof deck. Mm -hmm. The synthetic is something you still have to nail down. Got it. It's got some of the same material, but it's, 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 the application is different. Um, so those were your three current methods your new method is you, they really they really note that once water gets into a roof system it's going through the joints of the plywood it's going through the joints of the osb that's where the leaks are materializing on the inside so the new code is trying to protect that by making you tape those joints with with flashing tape or peel and stick or using two layers of underlayment if you're not going to put something that's going to stick to the deck you have to now put two layers of underlayment down so roof prices should go up about $150 every every 100 square feet. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, because that's be just the new code, and that code goes into effect in 45 days. Really? Yeah, so the way, the way that we're currently roofing now, and then as a firm, we used to be able to help people with something called an after-the-fact permit. Because of the new changes in the building code, because of Hurricane Irma, we can no longer assist people with after-the-fact permits because I guarantee you, if it was built pre-2020 building code, it's not going to meet the 2020 building code. There are a lot of changes happening because of Hurricane Irma in the new building code to make insurance companies happier. So because of those codes, <laughs> I imagine they push a lot of the liability back on the inspector, even though it may have been done correct at the time it was done. Well, no. If it was built correct to the code, you only have to build your house to the code that was in effect at the time your house was built. But if you didn't get a permit, you but don't know But if you didn't get a is. permit, you have to be a current code. So yeah, after the fact, the, the, the art, the business of after the fact permits, and we hate after the fact permits, but the but our ability to do them disappears in 45 days just because we know wow. it's not going to meet current code. Man, it's going to it's going to be expensive to build a house next year because I think they're going up on impact fees in our area at least oh, yeah, for no. sure. Hence, back to what I've said all along, it's going to get more and more expensive to live in Tampa. Yeah, well, you know. The is, new prices well, rise, and, and so the, the insurance rates aren't going to go down anytime soon either. So No, luck. the codes get stricter. The forms get stricter. Their, in, their rates go up and their I, denials go up. I have to share this really quick because we're out of time. But I took a call yesterday from somebody moving from California. And I'm like, so what's going on? Like, what, what's making you want to move here? And he's like... Yeah, we just want to move to a uh, a red state. Like we're tired of the political climate, and yeah, we're done. We're going to move in six to nine months. I'm like, all right, welcome, but and that's why Leo, we're not getting Leo any cheaper. Leo said on the opening that we are not a backwoods uh, state right, so anymore. We're not. All right, stick around. We'll be back for hour number two, all about roofing with West Edwards. Back in just a moment. Stick around. <laughs> 